good evening to each and every enlightened soul who has joined today's online expert lecture series this expert lecture is being hosted around the theme of un sustainable development goals and under the expert lecture series 21 23 and today is the fourth lecture of the year 2023 we are really thrilled and delighted to have eminent speakers in these expert lecture series from around the globe the session doesn't end at the culmination of the lecture being delivered by the expert but it gets all the more nourished by the valuable inputs and insights Hello. of our highly experienced and intellectually superior audience from across the globe so for today's expert lecture on teaching bhagavad gita to the society for sustainable development we have with us a very seasoned and experienced speaker of the day dr pratibha verma ma'am without taking much time i would humbly call upon our webinar director ma'am professor hemlata talesra ma'am to kindly come forward for a welcome note and introduction of the esteemed speaker over to you pratibha thank you hemlata ma'am thank you dr seema thank you honorable dr martin today's speaker dr pratibha verma dignitaries attendees and scholars on behalf of different collaborative organizations it's a great honor for me to welcome all of you the expert lecture series was started from january 2021 and still continue so i i think it's i believe that this is a perfect platform to exchange and share the expertise so before expert lecture i welcome dr martin a great visionary philosopher writer and social reformer president of wcpa and chief executive earth constitution institute usa dr martin is a author a large number of books and articles traveling lecturing worldwide to promote the unity of the earth one constitution one parliament and holistic planetary transformation we are very much grateful to dr martin for giving his valuable time for blessing and opening remarks in most of the lectures so i so before expert lecture i request dr martin kindly for here his blessing and opening remarks thank you very much uh, yeah. professor hamata um i i am very pleased that today's subject uh, the bhagavad gita in relationship with the un sustainable development goals uh because the bhagavad gita is about the transformation of consciousness so in it's about something that's so fundamental uh that needs in my view needs to be there in human life and that is uh a, a an understanding of what the the gita calls karma yoga the karma of action we need proper action we need right action and uh and i think that this this topic which i haven't heard uh raised in this forum to to this point would, would be very important and i only wish i could stay with it but i'm in the middle of something very important this morning and i can't be here but but uh i ju i just want to uh read a couple of lines from uh chapter 3 of the gita where it says all actions take place in time by the inner waving of the forces of nature but man lost in self delusion thinks that he himself is the actor but the man who knows the relationship between the forces of nature and actions sees how some forces of nature work upon other forces of nature and he becomes no longer their slave right this is the kind of insight that i think we need in environmental studies where instead of uh, uh, a a world of expansion and economic uh, domination and and continual uh, pollution 
we need to be in harmony with the forces of nature and understand them and and through self-sacrifice uh, of our of our uh, egoistic desires uh find a way to live uh that is articulated in the un sustainable development goals so i i just want to say what an important topic this is uh that for all, all of us to reflect on and uh I, and i want to give my blessings to this uh forum and and uh underline how important it is and i just wish i could stay with it but i i have obligations uh in the immediate uh morning this morning thank you very much all we appreciate your being here thanks a lot dr martin we have no words for your encouragement and support we wish to receive your guidance in future also thank you very much sir for thank you. this and continue to look forward your blessings thank you very much sir thank you so now I welcome our today's speaker, uh, Dr. Pratibha Verma, working age professor and AMP, preacher associated with Puratattva, Kerspati, Mayapur, an institute engaged in spreading spiritual teaching based on Bhagavad Gita, and AMP Srimad. Bhagavatam, two masses. Earlier, Dr. Pratibha was working as head of department, Sastric Studies, Bhakti Vedanta, College of Vedic Education, Navi Mumbai, Director of Bhugarbo Geosciences, Navi Mumbai. Dr. Pratibha Verma completed her PhD in education on Srimad Bhagavad Gita and holds three master's degree, MPhil, Zoology, Toxicology, MSc Geology, and MA, and also completed a degree of Bhakti Shastra in 2021 from ISKCON Board of Examination and ISKCON Teachers Training Program from ISKCON Ministry of Education, Mayapur. Dr. Pratibha has 20 years of teaching experiences as TGT in science and biology and harmony as an honorary lectures in zoology. In postgraduate college, preaching spiritual sciences from last 12 years in ISKCON, International Society of Krishna, Consciousness since 2011. Also served as HOD, Sastric Studies from 2016 to 2021, and taught various courses of Sastric Studies to 950 students since 2016. Teaching Bhakti Sastri to a group of 30 students, she is conducting regularly online lectures on teaching of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavat, which are available on YouTube under the channel Dr. Janki DD is called. Uh, and 190 videos are available on YouTube with more than 31,850 viewers. Her innovative research on direct development a model on completing Intelligence content derived from Bhagavad Gita earned her the best paper presentation award in 2019 from RI Regional Institute of Education, Bhuneshwar, at international conference. Eight researches and research papers were published on different aspects in international and national journals on empirical analysis of complete intelligence content academic performance, physical fitness, well-being, developing positive attitude and behavior, managing women's life challenges and behavior, and Vedic perspective, effectiveness of spiritual of human mind, 
environmental sciences, essential life values from Bhagavad Gita for comprehensive development and success of the students. So regularly and continuing, she is writing articles in different magazines. Also completed a book on uh, Vesvatva, Equital Bhagwati uh, Sadachar. And Dr. Verma is delivering her late presentation on teaching Bhagavad Gita to the Society for Sustainable Development. She, it is her vast experience and practical experience, practical knowledge. She has very good practical knowledge. So I request Dr. Uh, Dr. Pratibha Verma to deliver her lecture. Dr. Pratibha Verma. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Dr. Professor Hemlata Talesra, Madam, for giving such a vast <laughs> introduction about me. I don't know I am eligible for that or not. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, a very warm good evening to all of you. First of all, I want to pay my sincere gratitude to Professor Himlata Talesra, Madam, to give me this splendid opportunity to speak on this international educational platform in this expert lecture series on UN Sustainable Development Goals. I welcome everyone for coming and joining this presentation. And a special thanks to Dr. Martin, Dr. Vasif, Dr. Simatyagi, Madam, Dr. Murti, Sir, and a special thanks to Dr. Dharmendra Shrotriya, Sir, because he is my PhD guide. I requested him to join today, and he has joined. Thank you very much, Sir. And thank you all the participants who have joined. Thank you all. Now I request to webmasters to please share my presentation. Okay, madam, if uh, if webmaster is not yeah okay. yes yes, yes. Uh, then uh, can i try uh, okay here's then yeah oh fine thank you so much so my name is dr pratibha varma and presently i teach online shastri courses as hemlata madam has told to people for the welfare of society and today i will deliver my lecture on teaching bhagavad gita to the society for sustainable development next slide please sustainable development related to social awareness and being socially aware for sustainable development means understanding human behavior and its influence on society committing to change our activities to protect the society environment and the planet and directing activities our activities towards welfare and sustenance of the society most educationists interpret education as a tool for addressing health care human rights human values community connection environmental issues and so on but sustainable development in education involves learning about the environment community well-being making sensible decisions uplifting welfare and quality of life by improving access to basic health and understanding world trends to face the future with hope and confidence next slide please so what is the need of teaching bhagavad gita to the society why it is necessary generally we all have seen that in all schools colleges and universities they target students to give more and more information and knowledge which makes them intelligent and that intelligence they use for earning money in the form of getting salary from job or developing their own business but 
Bhagavad Gita adds value towards creating the right character and attitude, which helps in overall development of the people and society as well. Teaching Bhagavad Gita aims towards the improvement of the knowledge, attitude, and skills necessary to enhance the natural balance in the society. The timings and situation when the Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Lord Krishna to Arjuna in Battle of Kurukshetra in itself speaks about its effectiveness in dealing with critical situations. When Lord Krishna spoke this Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna and Arjuna requested before speaking, Arjuna requested to Lord, kindly take my chariot to the Kurukshetra battle where both armies are standing and waiting for the fight. So Krishna took his chariot and when he reached over there, he looked both the side and what did he found? He found everywhere, both the side, either his father, his grandfather, teachers, maternal uncles, paternal uncles, brothers, son, grandson, friends, well-wishers, all were present. After seeing all of them, he was bewildered because he was filled with full of compassion. That time, he was not ready to fight. That was the right time when Arj Krishna told this Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. So this Bhagavad Gita is very much authorized in present condition also. Because in this age of Kali, people are lazy, less intelligent, quarrelsome, unlucky, disturbed and misguided. They don't know what are the moral values of the life, how to spend their life, how to do their activities. So there is a need to provide a holistic and interdisciplinary approach to education that helps in overall development of human beings. Bhagavad Gita teaches us to optimize our life, develop in our career, inter develop our interpersonal relationships and productivity. Next slide, please. Teaching Bhagavad Gita to society is very important. Why? Because Bhagavad Gita is not an ordinary book. It is a wisdom literature which helps everyone to completely mastering their life in all four dimensions. These all four dimensions I have derived from Bhagavad Gita. And these dimensions are physical, emotional, intellectual and spiritual. Physical dimensions are physical intelligence related to the health, which helps in keeping us organized, energized, bring our health, happiness and make us disciplined while emotional intelligence related, related with the edu emotional health, which keeps a person mentally balanced, stable, enthusiastic and motivated all the time. Intellectual intelligence makes a person creative, focused to their goal and sharp so that they can think critically. And spiritual intelligence related to spiritual health which keeps a person socially aware, conscious, constructive, happy and peaceful. Next slide, please. Now, here I'm going to take one by one all four dimensions in detail. The first dimension is physical dimension. Physical dimensions are concerned with the individual's overall physical well-being. It generally reflects the body's strength, flexibility and ability to fight against diseases. It is a well-noted fact which everyone knows that if one does not take care of his health, eventually deteriorates his quality of life, his mental status. Even he deteriorates his interpersonal relationship and it affects his career also. So it is very important to have our body physically fit, fine and active all the time. Bhagavad Gita teaches us how we can keep our body perfectly fit and active all the time 
to optimize productivity along with improved brain power and reduce risk of different diseases. It is said in Bhagavad Gita that who is regulated in his habit of eating, sleeping, recreation and work can mitigate all material pains and suffering. It is mentioned in chapter 6 verse 17. Yukta hara viharasya, yukta chestasya karmasu, yukta swapnava bodhasya, yogo bhavati dukha means if a person regulates in his eating habits, in his viharasya, in his recreational activities, in his all kind of work, in his all efforts, in his all prescribed duties, even if he regulate in sleeping and awakening, he can mitigate all his problems of life and sufferings and he become happy. It is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapter 6 verse 16. Na atiyashnas tu yogo vasti, na che kantam anshantaha, na cha ati sapna shilasse jagrato ne vacharjuna means those who eat too much or too little sleep too much or does not sleep enough cannot become a yogi or attain success because if a person eats more it leads to sleep more and if a person sleep more he becomes lazy and laziness affects his potentials he cannot work up to his full potentials generally it is a fact that one should sleep for six hours if he want to be healthy and do his all work perfectly he should sleep six hours if a person is not healthy can sit more than six up to seven hours but if a person sleep more cannot complete cannot achieve his potentials and less sleep also affect his health it will deteriorate please uh, change the slide So what we should eat and how much we should eat, that is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Because eating significant, significantly influences our activity, our productivity. Mentioned, Bhagavad Gita mentioned in chapter 17th verse 8. Ayu sattva bala rogya sukhpriti vivardhana rasya snigdha isthira radya ahara sattvika priya means food that are fresh, juicy, wholesome, nourishing and pleasing to the heart, promotes the lifespan, strength, heart, health, happiness and give us satisfaction. Whereas the food which are too bitter, too sour, salty, burning, burning hot, pungent, dry or sizzling, very hot, cause suffering, sadness and diseases. Katva, Amla, Lavan, Ati, Ushna, Tishna, Ruksha, Vida, Hinaha, Ahara, Rajasya, Ista, Dukha, Shoka, Amaya, Prada. Similarly, food that is tasteless, decomposed, putrid, give bad smell, consisting the remnants of the other person, keep untouchable things. It leads to distress, infection and different diseases. So we should be very careful according to Bhagavad Gita what should we eat and what should we avoid while eating. So eating and sleeping both are important. Please go back to the previous slide. With eating and sleeping, practicing yoga or doing exercise is also very important. That is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapter 6 verse 11, 12 and 13. How to sit, how to do exercises. Uh, there is a shloka comes, verse comes, Shucho deshe pratisthapya, isthira masanam atmanaha, na ati uchritam na ati nicham, jayala janako shottaram. Means, you should go to a secluded place, spread a kusha grass over there and cover it with soft cloth and then sit over it with firmness and practice yoga and purify your heart by controlling your mind, senses and all the activities. And how to sit? That is also mentioned. Samam kaya shiro grivam dharyan achalam isthara sampreksha nasika gram swam 
unavalokayan means whenever you sit for exercise for yoga you should not look at here or there focus at the tip of your nose and sit straight keep your backbone your neck and your head straight they should not move that is the right way so this is also mentioned in bhagavad gita actually bhagavad gita teaches in every aspect of life what we should do and what we should avoid next slide please next comes to emotional dimensions emotional health is a measurement of the ability of our thinking our feeling and willing it is all related to our mind and its behavior in different life situations like we know that mind has three functions thinking feeling and willing which all culminate into the emotional intelligence that emotional intelligence deals with sense of well being our thoughts action habit and therefore behavior like whatever we think feel or desire it makes our thoughts and these thoughts work start work in this way that uh, we start to plan in our mind and start to work with our senses that makes our activity so thoughts leads to activity whenever we keep on doing same kind of activity or action it makes our habit and this habit leads us to our behavior when whenever we continuously follow the same habit it makes our behavior and ultimately the destiny so we need to be very careful before thinking willing or feeling because it makes our basics in our mind bhagavad gita clearly identifies and provides solution to control all these things to control all our emotions it is mentioned in chapter 6 verse 5 and 7 5 and 6 what that mind is our best friend and enemy as well atmeva he atmano bandhur atmeva ripuratmana and how to control it that is also mentioned bandhuratma atmanastase yenatmeva atmana jitah anatmanastu shatrutve vartetatmeva shatruvat means one who has control his mind the mind remains his friend and one who is failed to do so mind will remain his greatest enemy so everything comes from our mind mind is our best friend or our enemy this fact arjun knows very well he asked to krishna lord krishna the nature of mind is flickering o oh krishna nature of mind is flickering restless turbulent obstinate and very strong it is very difficult to control it i can control the waging wind but i cannot control the mind that time krishna told him asanchayam mahabaho mano durnigraham chalam abhyasena tu kantaya vairagena cha grahyate i know krishna told i know it is that it is very difficult to control the mind but it is possible by suitable practice and by detachment so what should be practice whatever is favorable in your career for your life for social development for sustainable sustainable development that should be practiced and rest what is unfavorable we should be detached from it next slide please <clears throat> so there are other aspects of emotional dimensions like good relation motivation enthusiasm and meditation good relations are very important because they support us socially in our family with our friends which holds immense benefit which helps in keeping our mental health good whenever we interact with the society with the family and friends so keeping good relation is very important for our mental health motivation is a force behind one's action and behavior which leads a person to become attentive self control and less reactive like krishna motivate arjuna by telling shudram hrde dormalyam tyakto sthit tyakto uthisthit pananta pa 
कि हे पनंत ओ अर्जुन प्लीज गेट रिड ऑफ योर पिटी वीकनेस ऑफ हार्ट एंड गेट अप गेट रेडी टू फाइट सो मोटिवेशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट विच मेक अस फिल अस विद एंथुजियाजम एंड मेक अस रेडी टू वर्क सो वॉट वी शुड बी वी शुड डू वी शुड बी लेस रिएक्टिव बिकॉज एज वी नो एवरी एक्शन हैज अ रिएक्शन सो वी शुड नॉट रिएक्ट टू एवरी एक्शन इवन वी शुड रेस्पॉन्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू टेक वन वाटर बॉटल एंड अदर एनी कोल्ड ड्रिंक बॉटल एंड इफ यू शेक बोथ एंड कीप दैम अड वॉट विल हैपन द वॉटर इफ यू विल ओपन बोथ द वॉटर विल बी सेटल इट विल बी काम एंड क्वाइट देर विल बी नो ऑफ अवेसेंस वाइल वेन एवर यू कीप द soda bottle and open its lid a professor comes this through this example we can understand that we should not react we should be always calm in all the situation that comes from motivation so that is the motivation is the main theme which krishna told arjuna for the bhagavad gita he was keeping him motivated all the time next is enthusiasm enthusiasm means action without enthusiasm one cannot be successful enthusiasm is that much compulsory to get success in our life and it relates to good attitude perform his good his duty perfectly keep the person open eager and determined to become successful Enthusiasm mentioned in chapter 18, verse 26. Mukta sango anhamvadi dratyu utsaha samanvita siddhe asiddheyo nirvikara ha karta satvik uchchate means if a person is detached, free from false ego, is determined and enthusiastic, is undisturbed between success and failure. is the successful person he can achieve success easily because as the phrase is uh, there one cannot dim the light if one shines if it shines from within so if you have enthusiasm within yourself no one can stop you no obstacle can stop you so to become successful in your life enthusiasm is a crucial factor next is the meditation one must certainly withdraw the unsteady mind and bring it back to the control of the self with the intelligence that is meditation and it is mentioned in bhagavad gita chapter 6 verse 26 yato yato nischalati manah shanchalam istiram tatas tato niyam etat atmani ev vasham nayet wherever your mind flickering because of the, its flickering nature wherever your mind wanders and agitate bring it back regulate it under the control of self with intelligence because intelligence helps in reducing the stress and help in focusing the goal whenever a person is under stress hormone like cortisol adrenaline releases which increase his blood pressure his heart rate and give lot of trouble like hypertension and so many things so it can be reduced through meditation through doing exercises so whenever we do exercises we do meditation good hormones like serotonin dopamine and orphan these release which make us healthy happy and peaceful so that is the work of meditation it helps in reducing the focus next slide please next come to the intellectual dimension intellect intellect plays a very important role in the development of the human being because intellect is related to our creative abilities our critical thinking focus self assessment and so many other qualitative dimensions qualities uh, which make one more mindful and better at reasoning skills Bhagavad Gita provide extensive details for improving intellect strength 
for the greater well-being of the people. As it is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapter 2, verse 56. Dukheshu anudvigne manaha, sukheshu vigat ispraha, vit raga bhaya krodha, istitidhi muni uchate. Here, the definition of study intelligence person has given that one who, whose mind remains undisturbed amidst misery, who does not crave for happiness, and who is free from attachment, fear, anger, is called a sage of study intelligence. And what does he do? A person who has study intelligence, he is working with calmness. He is a perfect thinker. His critical thinking is perfect. He develops abstract thinking. He is always clear in his thoughts and dexterity in his field. Whatever field he works, he is always good, perfect. Next slide, please. Other aspects of intellectual dimensions are critical thinking, focused self-awareness. Critical thinking is the power of developing logical adaptability and acting in accordance with time, place, and environment and the object. Focus when the person's intelligence is steady or one pointed towards his goal, he becomes creative. He becomes in to solve his problem success without delay. As mentioned in chapter 2, Bhagavad Gita chapter 2 verse 41. Vyavasaya atmika buddhi ekaha kuru nandana bahu shakha henantashe buddhyo evavasai nam. Vyavasaya atmika buddhi ekaha kuru nandana means one should have one pointed intelligence, means one should focus on one thing to achieve success. If he focus simultaneously, on various things, he cannot get proper results up to his potential. He will get small, small things, but not full potential. If he wants to achieve his full potential, reach up to the pinnacle of the success, then he should keep his mind focused to that goal. Self-awareness is also a crucial factor for self-assessment. As we all know that we need to assess ourselves always all the time because unless one is not deeply familiar with our own strengths and weaknesses cannot achieve success in life so that is the important factor whatever our strengths are we should focus on it or on our talents on our skills and whatever weaknesses we have we should recognize them and work on them transform them into our strengths so assessment is very much required. People who have negative attitude, poor self-concept and poor self-esteem lose their hope and fail in their life activities. As mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapter 1 verse 45, Yadi maam aprati karam asashtra shastra paanaya There Arjuna told to Lord Krishna before he started the fight, after seeing his relatives in both the parties. He says to Arjuna that, Oh Krishna, I will not fight. It will be better for me if Dhritarashtra's son kill me unarmed and unresisting on the battlefield. So that shows the poor self-esteem. It should not be there. We should keep our self-esteem up, keep our attitude positive that we learn everything from Bhagavad Gita. Next slide, please. Here we come to spiritual dimension, the fourth dimension. That is the most important dimension of CIQ. CIQ, the symbol is there in each and every slide on the top. That is the symbol of my PhD work. It has four cues, means physical question, intellectual question, ritual question, and emotional question. So that symbol I have taken. So what is spiritual dimension? Spiritual dimension helps one to know the purpose of the life, the state of excelling in the life. It helps in improving the quality of our life, feeling of inner peace and reducing anxiety. It helps in creating balance with all the dimensions 
whatever dimensions I have mentioned, physical, emotional, and intellectual. These all are balanced when a spiritual dimension is there in our life. As mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 3, verse 42, Indriyani paranyahu, indriye bhe paramanaha, manasastu para buddhe, yo buddhe paratastu saha. Here it is mentioned that hierarchy or of these four things are mentioned that mind is higher than the senses intelligence is higher than the mind and soul is still higher than the intelligence so after knowing this that soul is the highest we should control our senses and the mind through our spiritual intelligence so what is the spiritual intelligence what does it do Spiritual intelligence encourage people in all the situation to use their social awareness, aptitude and insight to become more effective as individuals and as members of the society. So, Spiritual intelligence, some qualities are like person should be helpful. He should be always ready to help others, enthusiastic all the time and should have good consciousness he should be fearless and he should pay gratitude which i will mention in next slide so everything I'll come back to the previous slide please everything depends on our food spiritual intelligence also depends on our food whatever we eat it brings our intelligence sharp how it is mentioned in the Vedas, Ahar Shuddho Sattva Shuddhi, Sattva Shuddho Dhruva Smriti, Smriti Lambhe Sarva Granthi Naam Vipra Mokshaha. Means, if one eat the sanctified food, the purified food, his life, his existence becomes purified. And when his life is purified, his small fibers of the brain or, or memory or brain power also sanctified. And when once brain the whole body is sanctified purified he get liberation or success in all the endeavors so general in general we can say that pure consciousness comes from starts from our food whatever we eat if we eat good things healthy things it will purify our consciousness and with purified consciousness we can achieve success and we can achieve our potential, whatever we want to. Those who, whose faith is very deep and who has practiced control their mind and senses attain divine knowledge. This is the formula given in Bhagavad Gita, what is supreme peace? Hmm? Four, chapter 4, verse 39. Shraddhavan labate jnanam tatparha when one is faithful in controlling his mind and senses, he gets divine knowledge and through that transcendental knowledge, he quickly attains everlasting supreme peace. So what is that knowledge? Knowledge is simple, to control the mind and the senses. One who learns how to control his mind and the senses can achieve anything, can achieve happiness, can achieve supreme peace next slide please so other aspects of spiritual dimensions are gratitude gratitude is most important in our life because it increases the incidence of positive emotion in our life it increases the kindness satisfaction determination peace and happiness so one should give proper respect to god demigod qualified brahmanas spiritual master teachers and superior people like father, mother or any person who is conversant with the Vedic knowledge. This is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita chapter 17 verse 14. Devaduja Guru Pragyam Pujanam Shocham Arjavam Brahmacharyam Ahinsam Cha Shariram Tapa Uchate So Devaduja Guru Pragyam We should pay respect to all those who are elders who give us something. We should always pay Gratitude, be thankful to all them. Next is empathy. Empathy results in expression of compassion, humanity, sympathy. 
because as we know at the time of quarrel in the kurukshetra when arjuna told he set aside and he told kripya paraya bisto vishri dantam idam abravit when he has seen both the parties his heart filled with lot of compassion for his all relatives and well wishers he was not ready to fight that was because of harmony because of sympathy because of compassion that should be there even though that quality is different because arjun uh, to arjun krishna told give up your pity weakness of heart and get up get ready to fight so this empathy and that motivation is little different uh, let me continue i can explain it if time will remain so next is happiness the highest kind of happiness can only be achieved by practice of spirituality highest kind of happiness is also mentioned shaknoti he vyah sodum prakshari vimokshana kama krodh udbhavam vegam sa yukta sa sukhi naraha means a person who is able to tolerate urges of his senses urges of his desire and anger can be happy and that happiness will be everlasting if he can control his anger his desires and his urges of senses five senses uh, knowledge gain senses are there so control all of them if a person can do it he can be happy all the time and side by side that happiness can be achieved by paying gratitude showing empathy to the people compassion improving social connection by developing positive relationship among society whenever we spend some time in nature in open air in hilly area near river bank or sea beaches or in greenery in nature and sometimes in religious places these things whenever we are in contact with na in nature these things boost our spiritual health reduce our stress anger fear and increase our emotion so if we feel stressful depressed we should go to the nature to be happy to release positive emotions next slide please so here now i am coming to recap sustainable development guidelines from bhagavad gita and here i have taken important 10 points which i have mentioned so important 10 points are there first balanced diet we should eat balanced diet second we should take sufficient rest both of them are required to keep our body fit and fine and healthy third doing regular physical exercise benefits both the body and the mind as well fourth sorry fifth 1 2 3 fourth okay balanced relation balanced relation help to stay with family and friends to remain happy and free from all kind of mental health whenever we share our things with friends with family members with our near and dear we get rid of all mental health problem fifth point meditation meditation keeps our mind steady and focus six remain enthusiastic because enthusiasm is very much required for our success six focus on your strength whatever is required focus on that seventh hmm? eighth creative be creative creative all the time and pay gratitude that means help others uh, help others and tenth is be grateful to those who help means pay gratitude to those who help you in any way so whenever all these ten values balanced diet sufficient rest physical activity balanced relations meditation enthusiastic enthusiasm focus creativity health and gratefulness whenever all these values which these are most important when these values 
are integrated and applied one will be free from physical and mental health problems and he will remain happy all the time and peaceful that peace will be the supreme peace will not go means that person will not disturb at all next slide please to conclude my topic i want to say that by following all these values of bhagavad gita which directs towards welfare of the sustainable development we may cure the current issue of society at large in bhagavad gita everything mentioned systematically what is the knowledge of eternal soul what is body what is the role of mind how we should work what is the art of working without reaction what are the three modes how these three modes influence all the human beings what are our regulated habits how one should speak how to eat how to recreate how to control one's mind and senses how to meditate and so on so many things are given in bhagavad gita this time is very less to mention to take all the qualities it needs lot of time like i take lectures and in one hour lecture i take only five verses and five verses sometimes i feel time should be more so bhagavad gita is full of moral values which can make our life successful like you must have seen so many motivators are there so how do they get all the values basically they all get from bhagavad gita because bhagavad gita is a miracle book it's not the ordinary book it's not the holy book it's a manual for human life so teaching from bhagavad gita can be practiced as a powerful catalyst for transformation of our life and achieving such a position will naturally produce capable individuals striving for the ethical and sustainable development of the society with this uh, i thank you all and i finish my presentation